Hey everyone, welcome back to the Electric Supercar Channel. This week we're gonna add some thermistors to the battery modules. Let's get to it. This is the Intelcraft refillable pressurized sprayer. Let's see what we've got here. All right, look at that. Interesting. Just a little measuring container. All right, so one of the things I'm gonna try, I have this degreaser that I use all the time and I mix it and I put it in the spray bottle. So I think this will be a great test case for this system. So my degreaser is a four to one. The measuring cup comes in handy. So again, this is degreaser, this is concentrate, so it wants to be diluted. Four parts water, one part degreaser. It is time to give it a try. Here's the first go. Ah, that works awesome. It does have a triple anti-rust processing. So cool. It's got accurate measurements. So it's got nylon pads for sealing, which is reliable performance. And it's really a versatile use. It's ideal for paint sprayers, spraying cleaning agents, degreasers, coolants, disinfectants, coatings, lubricants, rust preventatives, so brake cleaner, cool. fuel additives. All right, so I'm gonna try and show you, but it's a super fine mist. Can you see that? So it's got a nice label for whatever you're putting in there. And it's pretty economical, it's about $40. This is the InnoCraft refillable pressurized sprayer. So anytime you do this action for any sort of spray thing, you can use something like this. It's great, I love it. I'll leave a link for it in the description below. In case anybody needs a refresher, this is a 2014 Porsche. This is a salvage car that I bought at auction and I'm converting it to electric. The goal is to make this better than ever. We are gonna give it dual motors, that's right, all wheel drive, with eight or 900 horsepower. And we're gonna try and keep the same weight and handling. It turns out that the battery modules I chose for my application, although they're really good with power, they do not have thermistors. Thermistors are a very important part to monitor temperature to make sure the batteries are operating in a safe zone. So today, we're gonna to add some thermistors to these battery modules. I'm gonna show you some of the products I got. I'll put it here on the display table, tell you a little bit about it and what I'm planning to use it for. So that is a thermistor. Essentially a thermistor is a, I'll call it like a resistor. So basically electricity is fed through one side and the resistance is calculated and based on the properties of the resistor or the thermistor, it knows the temperature. So for the battery management system I have, um, it wants thermistors that are 10K, so that, that usually means 10,000 ohms of resistance. I probably should also mention, I got a pack of 60 of these for I think like $3. So they are not very expensive. Along with the thermistors, I got 26 gauge wire, uh, red and black. This will be to run all the leads that go to and from the thermistors to the BMS. I also got some of these. So these are just little two pin connectors. It also comes with all the metal leads that you crimp. So and these came in uh, sets of 50, so I got two of those. And my plan is to make this. So you're gonna have a thermistor on one end and connector on the other. And that way each of the battery modules I can connect and get the thermistor readings. So here is one of the battery modules. And on the end here, this is a end plate that you can actually pop off. Now this is where you need to start being careful. Um, the battery construction is nice, meaning that you've got the negative most end on this side and the positive most end on the other side. So it's really hard to kind of have any sort of bad things happen just when they're out. But when you take this cover off, you've got uh, a lot of exposed leads. So this is where we have to be a little bit careful. One thing I should mention, this is not high voltage. So this we've got about, what does it say, 25 volts. So again, this is not high voltage and typically the voltage between one cell and the next, I think is around five volts. So we're not talking about high voltage, nevertheless, discharging all the energy that's stored, even though it's five volts, we wanna be careful. The way these works, these are pouch cells and they're lined up kind of in this direction and going from one end to the other, that is like one pouch. You've got these strips or bus bars where they connect one pouch cell to the other. So on that side, they've got that kind of U-shaped over here connecting this first one to the second one. On this one, you've got it connecting the second one to the third one, third to the fourth, fourth to the fifth, fifth to the sixth, sixth to the seventh. So that's how many uh, cells this battery has. And we're actually gonna put uh, two thermistors. So I'm gonna put one thermistor on this side, I'm gonna put one thermistor on the other side. 
One of the things that works well, uh, batteries, besides being electrically conductive, they are usually made of metals that are also thermally conductive. So if we have a problem, I'll say a heat-related problem, um, no matter where you kind of put that thermistor, um, the heat will actually conduct very quickly and the thermistor will pick up that heat. So I'm gonna put one on this side, probably like maybe the third one in, I'll put one there, and then I'll put one on the other side, maybe the third one in there. At the end, there's actually epoxy that covers the thermistor and that is actually electrically insulative. So meaning you cannot really conduct any electricity through that um, epoxy. However, these metal leads, you can. So what we need to be careful with is, so when we're putting these on the battery modules, we need to make sure that these leads do not touch any cells. We'll have some capped on tape or some other insulative materials that'll help to make sure we don't have electric conductivity when we don't want it. After all, the way that this knows the temperature is the voltage. And if we're accidentally putting in some false voltage, that can distort or give the wrong reading. What is that? It's one of these things. They come in electric too? Today I'm gonna to figure out if JB Weld conducts electricity. I've read online that it says it's an insulator. It also says it's got steel reinforced epoxy, which kind of makes you think that it does conduct electricity. So I'm gonna mix them up and test it out. Sets in six minutes, cures in four to six hours. So about one ohm or a little less than one ohm. Here, it says open loop. So that means it's very much an insulator, but I do have another meter. So this is a loss of isolation meter. It'll put um, a thousand volts in here and it'll measure the resistance up to millions of ohms. So 2.2 giga ohms. That means it is very much an insulator. Is JB Weld a conductor or an insulator? It is very much an insulator. First things first, we're gonna make all the thermistors and get all the connections wired. I will talk you through what I'm doing here. I took about a four inch section of each wire, a red and a black, soldered it onto each leg of the thermistor, clipped off any excess wire, and put heat shrink on all the way up to the epoxy tip. All right, I just got done kind of putting some leads on all these thermistors. So hopefully I've got 56 of them. I think I originally had 60 thermistors and I think I soldered all of them, but like maybe one or two. For this section, I popped off all of the end covers. I placed capped on tape over the metal strips where I'd be attaching the thermistor wires. I then taped the wires to the cells. Once I was satisfied with their position, I got out the epoxy, which is an insulator, and epoxied all the thermistors in place. I threaded the wires through the end plates, crimped on the terminals, assembled the plugs. I used some hot glue as strain reliefs. I probably didn't explain this very well, but so I put the epoxy actually on the end of the thermistor onto the end tab of one of the battery pouches. So again, I should get some good thermal conductivity to read all the temperatures there. This also acts as, uh, I'll say like, if, if a wire gets caught or whatever, I don't want it to pull um, on the epoxy. I'd rather have it kind of pull on some tape or some other things. So I've got some of those, I'll call them strain reliefs in place. Wire gets pulled, pulls the tape off here rather than kind of right here at the epoxy. So that's all by design. I've also got it um, zip tied here. This is just so the wires aren't flopping around. They don't get squished and things like that. I also put on hot glue for a strain relief. And you might think that's a little odd. The other thing is it is very forgiving. It's very, it's very flexible. So here is like a full stick and you can see the full stick is very flexible. So um, just put a, a bead around that. Again, it'll help so if the wire gets pulled that I'm not pulling necessarily directly on the terminals. Um, put a lot of stress there, pull out wires instead. It'll kind of be absorbed by the hot glue. I've got half the battery modules done. So I've got uh, 14 modules here and I put thermistors on both sides. So essentially 28 thermistors 
And so with the plug, I make sure that I've got uh, an appropriate resistance. I've confirmed they're all working and not shorted. Time to get the second set. If you're enjoying this content and you haven't already, please consider subscribing. All right, it's a little bit shorter episode today. Um, it was quite the task to get all these thermistor made and get them all attached to the battery modules, but it's very important. These are the little things, if we get them right, it'll save us from those electric gremlins later. We do have a lot of other content coming your way. We've got some bus bars, uh, we got some motor mounts, a lot of other things. I'm really excited to bring you along. That'll do it for this time. See you next time. Focus.